Hello there and welcome to another episode of Into the Nothing with your favourite host Patrice and I have a guest on here that was with me not so long ago, Janine Howard. Welcome Janine. Thanks Patrice, good to be back. Mm -hmm. Janine was with us for episode 42 and the title of that episode, if you would like to go and check it out, is Less is the New More and I had to get Janine back on the podcast because you have listened to that episode or if not tune into it after but on that episode we were talking about Janine and her family making the decision and that you'd set your life up Janine so that you and your family can leave the Sunshine Coast here in Australia and go and live in Italy for three months and have your kids schooled over there and you were still working and just live this dream that you'd wanted to You were renewing your vows with your hubby and your family was there. And also on that trip, you did some other trips within that in Europe and you went to Egypt and you also went to London and did some other trips. So I had to get you back on because what I'm loving about this for my life, and I'm assuming my gorgeous listener, (laughs) is the permission slip that you offer. And there's so many things that you offer, Janine, like your energy is so clean, you're so like grounded, know who you are, but just the permission slip to follow what your soul wants and to just execute. So to get things started, and before we get things started, of course, I'd love for you, gorgeous human listening, to please subscribe if you haven't already. And please share this conversation with anyone you think would benefit from the topics that we're going to dive into at any moment. If you just get that nudge like Janine does, just follow through, send it. And, um, yeah, my intention is just that you feel a bit freer from this conversation to follow what it is that your soul's asking you to do. So, Janine, starting off with where we where we left off last time. So, if you could just talk about what Italy was like, like what did you do with your family? Obviously, gelato was involved and obviously lots of pasta and spritzes. <laughs> but, yeah, just like what was what was your three months in Italy like with your whole fam away from the Sunshine Coast? So we had dreamt of having this experience, but we weren't sure how it was going to play out. And so the the backstory about getting to Italy was that I stumbled across someone on Instagram who was um, going to to live, in fact, they were going over to Greece, um, but with a company called Boundless Life. So we found them and it ticked all the boxes of what we wanted to create for ourselves. So we went and had um, an apartment to stay in in a gorgeous tiny little town uh, north of Florence. We had school for the kids for three months. Um, The backstory again, if you haven't heard the last episode, my kids are unschooled. They don't go to regular school. They don't really go to any formal school. But it was really nice for them to have three months of stability and friends and Sure, they learnt some stuff, uh, but for us it was more about the community. So three months in Italy of having, um, I think it was 17 other families and we just immersed in together and we just had this incredible experience of what it was, what it's like to live as a local in a non-tourist town in Italy. So we got to wake up every day and walk the streets and see the flow of the culture and eat cornettos, cornetto crema every day um, with, you know, espresso macchiato. There was no flat whites. And, you know, watching the town come alive at night time, you know, around 6 o'clock, the whole town would come out. And everybody lives in an apartment. You know, there's no one sort of squirrels away into their own house this real communal way of living and you know the the phrase la dolce vita it was very much that way of living each and every day savoring food savoring culture savoring togetherness and we just loved every minute of it even the the mundane you know I still ran my business over there the kids went to school uh, my husband got to do pottery classes and we did yoga classes and hikes and wine tasting and, you know, all of the cool stuff. Um, but having that experience of not being a tourist, living in another town across the other side of the planet was just so incredible that, you know, we knew we wanted more. 
So that's mm. the next bit of this podcast. Yeah. And so I feel like we've got to just, I want to fill in a gap in gaps and like there's so many paths to explore with you, of course. And so on that trip, and obviously in that lifestyle of being in Italy and then you went to Egypt, like you're obviously just getting upgrades within your thoughts and your feelings of what's possible for you and your life. And so I think from here, I know it, I know it's a big jump, but it's like from Italy, can we talk about, did you always plan to go to Egypt before you had gone to Italy or was it a calling that happened on the a trip when you were in Italy? So Egypt was a calling that I had 12 months prior. Mm -hmm. So, well, actually a calling that happened many years prior, but it got cemented um, 12 months prior to us actually going to Italy and how convenient that I was actually based in Italy and was a three and a half hour flight over to Egypt. So it was a planned trip that I had with a a small group of women. So there, I think it was six of us in total. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going, I knew the date. I had absolutely no idea where we were going in Egypt. I was fully surrendering to that process um, and what I was going to experience there. I just knew 12 months ago that I was destined to go. And then during the lead up of the trip to Egypt, things broke out in the neighbouring country. So I had a lot of people around me saying, do you really think you should be going to Egypt? I even started to double you know, second guess myself. And then I found out that not only were we going to Egypt, we're actually going to the desert in Egypt, eight hours inland from Cairo. And I was like, really? Six women driving across the desert in Egypt? This doesn't make sense. Do you really think we should be doing this? And the answer was, yes, that is what we're meant to do. So that is what we did. And it was so mind-blowingly unexpected of the way my Egypt trip played out that my mind had a preconceived idea of what it was going to be like and it was completely the opposite of that but better than I could have ever planned. Can you explain a little bit about your Egypt trip? I've seen some of your posts online but I think... Yeah, if you could just explain what you started to receive. Obviously, um, well, not obviously, if, if you if you haven't heard from Janine before, Janine is so tapped in. You are the thing that I love about you and the reason I first got you on my podcast was because you are so connected to, connected to so many ancient teachings and ways of being, um, quantum field, the cosmos, very cosmic, but yet you – take that into your physical reality and really execute in a life that your family and you get to thrive. Like it's very tangible. It's not just like you're sitting and just meditating and playing in, you know, the light. You're like, yeah, yeah, and this is what this looks like as I show up physically. Um, So just so you know, as we dive into this conversation around Egypt, yeah, Janine is is a very open, fascinating woman channel. So, Janine, what was Egypt like and what did it start to offer you? So the Egypt trip that we ended up having, again, was very different to my mind perceived of it. And looking back, I now know the reason why we went out to the desert first. So we went out to a place called Siwa Oasis, and it's literally in the middle of nowhere. I think it's 50 kilometres from the Libyan border. However, once you arrive in Siwa, it is literally an oasis. So date palms everywhere. Um, very ancient civilization there, you know, very different to these six Western women that came walking into town. Um, it's not a tourist town for, there's not many people, Europeans, for example, that would go there. We knew, however, that being there, we were really there to tap into the elemental part of us. So the earthen part of us. So Siwa is known for its really high concentrated salt plains. You can actually swim in these salt plains. It's known for many uh, water channels where it's extremely dense with very high mineral content. So over the centuries, many kings uh, and dignitaries would actually go to Siwa for its healing purposes. So we knew that 
we were there to be healed. We knew that we were there to become as pure and close to earth as we possibly could become so that when we went back into Cairo and visited the, the Giza Plateau, we were pure, pure in our body, pure in our energy, pure in our light. And so we spent many days out there. So we were swimming in the salt water. I got buried in salt. <laughs> um, we, you know, were in the, the waters. One's called the, uh, the, the Isis, uh, what is it? The Isis, not bath, but Isis's, you know, water hole. So very, um, very ancient earthen kind of practices that we did over there. When we then went back into Cairo, into that hustle and bustle, we felt like we'd been to a different world, completely, you know, uh, uh, for example, we, we went out into the middle of the desert. You know, we, we had dinner under the stars in the middle of nowhere in the desert. In the desert, we found ancient coral reefs. We picked up amazing codes. So I, I talk a lot about codes. So symbols and signs and energetic downloads, um, the Venus codes, the birth of Venus, the rebirthing. I physically and metaphorically experienced another rebirth whilst out in the, in the desert. So coming into the Giza Plateau, I felt in full power, in full alignment. And so when we entered the Giza Plateau, which is quite a large space. If anyone hasn't been there, there's several pyramids. So you've got three of the main pyramids and there's smaller pyramids as well. And the moment I got off the bus, I felt electrified. Now, to create electricity, you need water. <laughs> and being out at sea, what was all about the water and high you need to be electrified you know so the high salt content so you imagine like our bodies were just cleaned and primed to become electrical conduits like a battery to be fully tapped in to the energy on the Giza plateau it was palpable to the point where I had tears streaming down my face I hadn't even touched the, the great pyramid yet tears streaming down my face and I felt pure love and pure joy myself and one of the other women were grabbed gently by a local man and he grabbed us and he looked us in the eyes and he said come with me and we were like all right you know like <laughs> <laughs> there was okay. no alarm bells we we're just like let's just follow what's going to go wrong who knows so we just followed him and he led us into the pyramid like past all of these people, and he took us to uh, a little almost like an alcove and he said to us, put your hands here and meditate. And the both of us just did what he said, put our hands down, closed our eyes, and boom, we were both jolted with such electrical, electrically charged energy and tears of joy running down our face like the feeling was almost undescribable and I look back now of all of the downloads that I've had over the years leading up to this trip and I'm like oh that was the 888 hertz frequency that I downloaded in Puerto Rico a year before that this is the new frequency for us to attune into as human beings to become enlightened and so, you know, we were there for just a few moments and just hugged this man. Like, you know, I, I think, I don't know whether he worked at the pyramids or just he was a local, who knows, but we hugged him and said, thank you, thank you. And he looked us both in the eyes. He said, you see it. You see the secrets. And we're like, oh, my God, we do. So that was the start of my entry into the Great Pyramid on Giza Plateau. And it gets more wild as we go. So I want to pause to see if you've got any questions. First. Oh, I just, uh, I just, well, I've just come back from India and had some similar experiences. So in the ashram that I was in for nine days. And so I'm just, 
yeah, this this world of energy that I that I had an experience and that you're speaking about. And I'm just like, wow, I just think that more and more of these conversations get to be had. And I really just want you to just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, here's the thing that the um, our consciousness is exponentially increasing as humanity. Um, there is new new findings happening every moment of every day, especially around the pyramids. I'm, I'm very connected to the pyramids, always have been since I got my first pyramid tattoo that I downloaded um, in a high priestess ceremony in Bali, as one does, um, which interestingly I didn't even know so that the two arrows at the top of my pyramid are actually called chevrons. I knew they were called chevrons mm-hmm. and I'd never realised that at the entrance of the pyramid is two chevrons exactly like that oh. that was the original entrance to the pyramids mm. so obviously i found this out you know a couple of years ago of but walking up to the pyramid and seeing those chevrons and having my two tattoos with it was just you know palpable I, yeah these are literal codes that i can feel having energetic information coming out of them so obviously when I was there, I was downloading like a mofo. Um, was it? And just and just a question on that, when you are so open and you're downloading so much information, and I know that this isn't new for you, it's not a, a, a new awakening of receiving information, but how do you, do you feel like you need to do anything with it? Are you writing it down? Are you just needing to absorb it? Like what, do you get overwhelmed? Do you like, hang on, can we just, this is a lot? Like how how are you with it? At this yeah, point, it's a really good question because you know what does that mean? Having downloads, what does this mean about having codes? So specifically on that day, I started receiving a lot of information. The information, I, I, it's like I can feel it coming down through me, and so I was called to stand over on the outside of the pyramid because we weren't even going in yet. We we're going in later that night. I got called to go and stand over. I think it would have been the north southeast would have been the western side of the pyramid and to put my microphone on and start just speaking so I did a video first of all about the pyramids and what information was coming through and next thing you know I was guided to start singing so I started what I would call light language and so I was literally able to it's like I can feel the energy coming from the pyramids and able to translate that into tones. Mm-hmm. And so those tones were getting me to tone higher and higher and higher. And so, you know, I was singing very rudimentarily, by the way, people can go and purchase the Egypt portals um, that has this light language. And I've done light language many times before, but not necessarily at this length and to be recorded and, you know, sold to people. So often when people first hear this light language, they're freaked out. They're like, whoa, that is super weird. Um, And then they get fully activated as well. So I have people messaging me after that going, the first time I heard that was that all of their judgments came up. Uh, and then the second time they listened to it, they're like, oh, wow, I just manifested a lot of money or an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, so that so I was doing a, a, a video and for the first time I was actually able to receive direct messages and be able to translate them in English. So instead of just toning and having some sort of singing noise coming through, it was literally the period we were sharing with me what they're there for and can you share with us some of the messages i don't remember a lot of it because it's like i move aside mm-hmm. and the information's coming through yeah however what i do remember look i could probably go and listen to my own recording yeah. <laughs> it's all in there is that the pyramids are a technology of conducting energy through our human bodies to realign our DNA into being able to unfurl and expand more of who we are and express that to the world and also as a stargate portal. Now, what that means, don't necessarily know, but there's another piece of this story about when we went in 
to the pyramid that night that will show you a little bit more about that. Can you, Janine, can you take us into the pyramids? Yeah, so let, let's go straight there. So imagine we spent the day on the Giza Plateau. Um, by the way, I also channeled information direct from the Sphinx and what's underneath the Sphinx. So that's on that, that this um, Egypt portals that I, I sell. As um, well. I will, I will, I will drop it in the description below so people can access it if they would like. Perfect. It's only seventy-seven bucks. It's it's cheap, but it's like got so much information. So then that night we went into the pyramid. We went uh, accessed all of the different areas. So we, I'll talk about the interesting bit. Here. It's all interesting, but the king's chamber. What happened there? relating to the Stargate portal. So we were allowed, uh, we were two hours private in the, the pyramid. And so we spent quite a bit of time in the king's chamber. When we're in the king's chamber, I could feel the energy. It was so potent. It was also extremely hot, but I could feel it. And so my heart was racing and my breath was very rapid and heavy it was so potent but exciting and electrified so you can imagine you're in this it's not a very big room and you're you just buzzing and everything seemed hazy and interestingly i look back at the photos that were taken in uh in the chamber and they're all as if there's like no 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 like everyone <laughs> heads are kind of like shape-shifting and so two interesting things about it being a stargate portal one was we all took turns lying in the sarcophagus and i'm doing that with air quotes it's called a sarcophagus i don't think it's a sarcophagus uh which is empty now and so when it was my turn to jump in and we didn't have long to do this because you're kind of not meant to do this. And we have a tour guide with us who's watching everything we do and you're not meant to sing and you're not meant to meditate and all of these things, right? There's all of these rules. But he said to us, just going to pop out for 20 minutes. So we're like, right, go. <laughs> do all the things. <laughs> so I laid down in the sarcophagus. Instantly, my body was literally writhing with energy. So if ever I get a, a Reiki healing or any sort of energy healing, my left hand goes, my left foot goes, and then all of me starts going. I'm very physical in my, like you can tell if I'm having energy work because I'm very physical. So, I, you know, I'm very allowing of that energy to run through my body. And so I'm sort of writhing a bit crazily. And all of a sudden I felt every part of my energetic being whoosh up through the roof of the pyramid and out through the top. Up, 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 up. And I sat up. The feeling was of ecstasy, like mind-blowing, complete euphoria. Nuts. And so then I'm told, quick, get out. It's my turn. So like... Oh. You're like, what? I'm not even in the building. I'm in the sky. Correct. So I get out and we're all, because we're all standing around each other and supporting each other whilst each um, woman is in the sarcophagus. And I'm looking across at Karina who um, led the trip. I'm looking at her with like the busiest smile on my face. And I'm going, I'm still up there. <laughs> <laughs> so we both were actively like bringing my energy back down into my body. And I was like, that is, literally like as if I went right up into the galaxies. So that was the first part of me going, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a portal into something, into somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. The second part was we all, um, whilst we still had a few minutes left, we did a little circle. By the way, I, got a, I had a bowl of water and I put it right in the middle of this circle. I still have some of that water. I've been making elixirs for people. And we all um, did an activation in, in the king's chamber. So we all kind of came together but individually just naturally started doing our own thing but together. And I naturally started to, to channel the energy and, and start singing. Now, when I say singing, I'm talking singing 
the highest octaves I've ever sung in my life in the most magical, perfect tone. I'm not a, a true born singer, I've done a bit of singing, but not any way, shape or form trained. And as I'm singing, I'm feeling the energy of my head pulling me up, up, up and up, like as if my head was becoming elongated. And I was constantly told to go higher and higher and higher. I'm singing probably better than Mariah Carey. (laughs) (laughs) When there's just really like high-pitched angelic tones and everyone else is toning and someone else has got these really low, beautiful tones going on. And afterwards, one of the girls said to me, she's like, it was like a chorus of angels was in that chamber. It was unbelievably the the energy and the frequency that was coming through each and every one of us. Mm. And you look at the pyramids of Giza, the plateau, they represent the throat chakra. Mm. So that's where, you know, since then I've been fully activated in my throat chakra, so fully activated in, in my light language but also in my voice, meaning that even when I just speak, the tones and the frequencies activate people. Mm. So in each and every one of us have this gift, by the way, Mm. is that going to these vortexes of energy really amplifies that. Yeah. Wow. I have heard stories of recently of another person being in the king's chamber in the sarcophagus and, yeah, having a, Uh, an activation and experience that like no other so it makes sense that it would be a portal and yeah in my own experience I've all I haven't been to any of these kind of sacred places and I've heard of lots of people going there for you know codes and upgrades and you know different things to their consciousness and I never fully understood and it's and because I've just come back from India and now I've had my own experiences of this where from my perspective, we get to go to these beautiful sites around the world and and simply receive just because we're here, which I think is really beautiful. We get to just feel love in these places that I see as batteries of energy. They're really they're potent, they're pure, whatever they're offering, whether it's whether it is in Egypt or whether it is in Bali or Mexico or in India and Ashram that I just spent time at, and these places that have for whatever reason, the ashram I went to, like it is so devotional every day. There's no shoes. There's no phones anywhere. You know, everything is so scientific in the way that they are using metal and water to conduct energy, to hold energy so that people can come and simply receive, for example, love for no other reason than you get to. You get to just be upgraded because you're here not because you're doing anything in the in the world or blah, 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 you've got this in your bank or it's because you're here. You, we get to receive and we, from my perspective, I feel like we live in, well, I live in Brisbane and so there's a lot of dense energies that aren't just devotional, pure love, you know, it's not just that intentional. And so while those energies are definitely here, it's just not that pure that I could just feel it. But, you know, yeah, you go to places like, Egypt and these pyramids like you, Janine, and, and obviously you're open to and you're receptive because you have been for many years and, and it's a focus for you to, to receive these kind of experiences. And how do you feel this kind of experience, for example, in the king's chamber where you felt like your energetic body was just flown through the period, through the top and into a galaxy somewhere beyond anywhere that you can imagine – how does that impact your life now other than your throat chakra now being fully activated? What else are you noticing in your life and within you that is different from that kind of experience? A few things. One of them that I'll speak about that, you know, has groundedness about it is that I am absolutely devoted to following the energy. And so what I mean by that is that we all get those intuitive nudges and hits of where to go, who to call, like just those little hits that sometimes our logical mind uh, takes over and says, oh, don't, don't do that. That sounds silly. So I'm absolutely dedicated to that. So, for example, when 
I was in Egypt. I had a girlfriend who I was, um, she was a friend of mine in Italy at the time. And she messaged me and said, hey, I'm going to pop over to London just for three days um, as soon as you get back from Egypt. Do you want to come with me? And I was like, oh, maybe, I don't know, that's a lot. You know, I've just been away from my children in Egypt and then going on a girls' weekend. And she said, oh, by the way, we're going to go Christmas shopping to the markets. Uh, I think we're doing a spa treatment in London. And she said, and I wanted to go out to Stonehenge. And I went, whoa, Stonehenge, that's interesting. Yes. And so Karina, who I was on the trip to Egypt with, she said to me, isn't that interesting? Because prior to the Egypt trip, she got the call that we were there to bridge heaven with earth. So you think about the galactic nature of the pyramids with Siwa Oasis. And she said the night before she had a dream and she heard the message, and now bridge the stones. Mm. Like, right, well, that's done. I'll be heading off to Stonehenge, won't I? <laughs> so as soon as I got back from Egypt, within three days I was at Stonehenge and, boy, did that just bring everything back around full circle. And it was like I was able to bring the energy of Egypt to Stonehenge place it within that vortex and Stonehenge then was able to spread it out through all of the ley lines across the planet in like this upgraded version. Now, sometimes people are listening to this going, really, that sounds really far-fetched. You know, when you know, you just know, you know that you know. Yeah. And you know without judgment, you know, because if I started judging myself on these sort of things, then I wouldn't be able to do this level of work in the world. So I just go with it. So that got sent out across the planet to all of the other vortexes. So whether it's in Mexico, in China, to the pyramids there, um, through all of the, the chakras, basically, of the earth. Um, and then I was on a podcast with uh, Joanna Turner a couple of weeks after I got back, and she said, you do realise that Stonehenge is the heart chakra of the earth. And I was like, well, that makes sense then, doesn't it, that that was what then moved all of that energy through all of the other chakras in the earth. Mm. And just so beautiful too that I'm hearing, you know, for you to start and be uh, guided to go and spend lots of time just in nature, like you said, when you're in Siwa and and just that purification of the minerals and the water and the desert and just like the earth and then going to kind of like the cosmic technology of the pyramids but then being guided back to stones and the earth again. Like I, it just feels really nice to just ground that back in, that energy like you said. And just before we move on to you coming back to Australia and the decisions you've made since, which I think is just so exciting and, again, a, just another great permission slip for us all to, to follow our joy and follow our adventure, is there anything else that you feel like you'd like to share that you received from the pyramids or your time in Egypt that's like another code? I know that, you know, the Empress Codes have come through you, which is a great podcast episode here on Into the Nothing. But, yeah, is there anything else that feels like really poignant to share that you received while you're there around the way life gets to be, for example? Definitely. So the codes I got there, to be honest, were actually about the infinite wealth that we all get to receive and not just in money, but also in money. And so it's <laughs> like we were given, and I love the words that you use, permission slip. It's like a permis permission slip and a, a code for everyone to remember that the gold is within them. So the, the golden codes of, like I call it the, the golden empress now, the golden codes of infinity, like, you know, tattoo with it, which is also the eight on its side, uh, the 888 frequency, which I feel was very much potent within the king's chamber. That code is to be shared with everyone to say, if we actually go into more of a hierarchical, high, high, horizontal leadership, horizontal 
uh, no judgment on others. No one's no one's better than each other. There's no power above, power below. You know, if we lose all judgment of self and others, uh, then we all become in that infinite of the giving and the receiving, the giving and the receiving of that infinite flow. And so, therefore, that gets to be actualized, particularly in this year, which is 2024, which in numerology adds up to eight. Eight is the infinity code. Right, this is the actualization year. So this year I see a huge shift in financial uh, systems, in wealth dispersion across the planet. Um, it may not physically end up happening this year, but this is the year that it really starts to start and actualize. Um, all of our efforts start to get cemented and actualized this year. So whether that's if you've been running a business for a few years and now it gets to make the millions of dollars, whether it's, you know, that you're um, oh, like everything that's not aligned to truth gets to be shown and then aligned to that so that, you know, I'm even charities, I'm just getting messages through now, like charities that didn't have the right intentions behind it at the end will now have the right intentions and mm. be able to share the wealth and all of those kind of things. So there's definitely, yeah, this spreading of that code of wealth in all ways across choice as well. Freedom is wealth. Mm. Yes. Love that. Yeah. Year of the eight and year of the dragon. I just feel like this is our year to shine and I am a dragon and my number is eight. <laughs> So it's like, come on, Patrice, this is your year, surely. Yeah. Yeah. And the dragon represents DNA. Oh. So the dragon is, uh, okay, really quick bit of information. If anyone follows Robert Edward Grant, he went to the pyramids just after us. Mm. Uh, I actually messaged him and said, just so you know, I prepared the pyramids for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Oh, my gosh. He is. Right. On another level. So he has just released some information. Um, I think he actually released it on the Next Level Soul podcast, um, which is just the other day. And he is showing all of the drawings that are in the pyramids, inside the king's chamber, inside the queen's chamber. When I was inside the king's chamber, I did see the bulls on the wall. Um, I was looking for the alpha and omega on the um, sarcophagus. I couldn't quite make it out. But then he's literally been able to go in with a group of people and literally map out all of the imagery. There's That's a whole other thing. So go and listen to Robert Edward Grant. It'll blow your mind. Everything starts making so much sense yeah. when you start having all of these pieces coming through. Um, and I know for me, I, I asked to be shown the secrets of the pyramids a few years ago and said, just show me show me. And I keep getting shown more and more information. And so then last night, I actually, my tour guide in Egypt just messaged me and we've secured the pyramid, the Great Pyramid private access at night on the 12th of the 12th, 2024. And the Great Sphinx uh, from four o'clock till five o'clock that afternoon. Now, 1212 is a portal of energy. It's a Stargate portal. I've been actively involved in the last two years in a group over in New Zealand, just via Zoom, um, with my galactic self, Alamia, has shown up timely, not having a clue what she's doing, right? Me, Janine, has no clue. But I just ended up on these portal big sessions with all of these people around the world on the 1212 portal because Alamia, my galactic self, which we found out through my galactic Akashic Records, She's the queen of Andromeda, whose role it is to line up Sirius with the Andromeda galaxy and the pyramids on the Giza Plateau. Right, so this is the bonkers stuff that happens in my world, right? It's bonkers, but, like, how fun is it, you know? It's like what a fun thing to just lean into and just allow. And like you said, and it's to not judge it, you know, to just go with it. Why not? We are clearly multidimensional and whatever that means to you, you know, it, it gets to be whatever it wants it to be, but to not lean into these beautiful parts of yourself and also you probably can't deny it anymore too, Janine. Like there's no denying this part of your life. 
Correct. <laughs> and, you know, for, for a long time, you know, you go through that moment of going, am I making this up? Am I a little batshit crazy? And then when you stop judging yourself, you're like, what if we just went with this? What if we just explored a little more? And you're right, it becomes really super fun. You know, I feel like my my life is a constant Da Vinci Code movie, like an adventure. <laughs> I just don't have the, the outfit to go with it. Un- unpacking it all and the, and the codes and what does that mean? And then it opens up and actually that one thing has so much information that you can access. You're like, what the fuck? Okay, this art is really imitating the reality, isn't it? You watch these movies and then you're like, oh, my God, there's so much more truth in that than in that Star Wars or in that whatever that you're like, oh, okay, that's what's really going on. <laughs> if you Absolutely. want it to be, if, you, if you're willing to lean into it. And so, okay, so you had, you're still in Italy, but you've gone to Egypt. You've also gone to London. You're being activated simultaneously. Your children are having this mind-blowing experience living in Italy, going to school, because usually they're homeschooled in Australia. You come back to the Sunshine Coast and what starts to unfold for you there for you to, spoiler alert, sell your house and decide to go global with your family. (laughs) Exactly. So we got home, I think it was the 29th, 30th, basically at the end of November, you know, bit of jet lag and all the things. And a couple of days later, we were walking down the street with the dogs and my husband said to me, how are you feeling about being back? And I was like, I don't know, how are you feeling? Because I'm always the crazy one, right? He's really grounded. And he goes, I think I'm done. And I went, okay, awesome. So what do you want to do? And he goes, I reckon we sell everything and go overseas. And we're done, right, let's do this. So that was the 1st of December. By the end of December, we had the agent lined up. We had the photographs. I think we had the home photographs taken on Christmas Eve is how quick we moved, right? We'd spent three weeks like finishing the house because we'd been renovating slowly over a couple of years. So three weeks, both of us, paintbrush, finishing (laughs) everything, photos are done. And then by the end of the first week of January, boom, on the market, 30 days later, boom, sold at auction, boom, off we go 1st of March. <laughs> so so you're getting back at the end of November. You have this conversation with your husband. He's usually the one that's grounded. So you're like, I, I'd be happy to do whatever because I'm Janine and I could be anywhere, but he's the grounded one and he's ready to go. So then, yeah, with December, January, February, three months, you are fully sold and you are overseas. Correct. Wow. Suitcase each, 20 kilograms, by the way. I was like, what? And one backpack. That's it. Are you putting your stuff in, like you've got some a storage? You're going you're gonna to get rid of everything? Nothing. Everything. Wow. Literally everything is going. And why are you doing that? Because that's what the energy told us to. Right. Is, and when you say energy, are you open to energy that's like, is like, you feel like the door's opening, like it's exciting or is it? it feels like joy or what adventure, like what sort of energy are you following? Absolutely. So the the message was clear, sell. Okay, great. Well, that's what we're going to do. The message was clear and get rid of everything. Okay, that is what we'll do. Okay. So no questioning because as soon as you start to allow your logical mind to come in, it starts questioning, it starts uh, going, really, should we be doing that? Maybe we should keep some stuff. What if we come back? What if we, what if, what, what if, what if, what if? Whereas I'm so dedicated to just following the instantaneous energy and message that is the only truth. And when we can fully surrender to that being the only truth, it opens up literally infinite possibilities. So there is no plan there is no fallback. It is just go. And so we have booked the flights. We're flying to Bali. We'll stay there probably a month. We don't have accommodation as yet. We'll work that out. What we do know is we will go and do Boundless Life in Greece for three months, so April, May, June. That feels like fun. And then we don't know. There is literally no plan. 
Oh, my gosh. As I said, just so exciting, such a permission slip for myself and also I feel like my wonderful listeners have this inside them, you know. We're like, we want to live this bold life. We want to live according to our own our own navigation, our own compass. And, yeah, the way that you described that before when you're just like, if the nudge, just can you just go? Before your mind jumps in with all the questions, with the figuring it out, just go with and you'll be carried is what I'm hearing. Yeah. You'll be supported. And just the, the last bit on that because, you know, I've been living this way for a very long time and as, you know, a mother, that is challenging because, you know, there's, money to be made, children to be looked after, mortgages to be looked, you know, all of the things. Um, I retired my husband 10 years ago. So he's just been on this wild ride of his own personal development. Like he's been given an open slather, do whatever you want. And he's like, yeah, I want to be an actor. Do I want to be an actor? I don't know. And all of his own shit's come up in his own face over the last 10 years. Um, he's a carpenter as well. So sometimes he renovates the house. Sometimes he goes and do a, does other things. He's got literally infinite choice which can be really overwhelming Mm -hmm. however I feel for him in Italy something really locked in and he ended up downloading his own sacred geometry code that he went he drew himself and he went and got it tattooed on his back at the back of his heart chakra whilst in Italy And it's interesting you use the word compass because he got at the top this one. Oh, actually, no, at the bottom is this one is me. It's the feminine. This is the masculine for him. And for for anyone who's listening right now, Janine is pointing to tattoos that are on her wrists of they're like they're they're triangles, but on one of the um one of the points of the triangle, there's like another edge. And it's um I come watch it on YouTube. But, yeah, keep going, Janine. How we describe them is it's a triangle that's open, so open. how I downloaded it was open for change, and the two chevrons, like the two arrows at the top is the the chevrons, the pyramid. And so you put those to any, um, put the sacred geometry of each of the children on the other side. So it ends up being a compass full of sacred geometry inside it. And so for him, he really locked into that no matter what happens to the world, as long as we have each other, the four of us, that is home. That is our guiding compass. Oh, my gosh. What a note to end on. That is so beautiful. That must must feel so beautiful for your kids and for you and just your family to know that that's his compass is actually that home is the four of you. And it's on the back of his heart. Home is on in his heart. You know, it's it's within him. It's his family, and everything else is an adventure as you head off on this global adventure. Yeah. So maybe we'll check in in a few months' time and see where I am. <laughs> I think we need to continue this journey. And and again, to say thanks, Janine, for coming on again to into the nothing because you are choosing the nothing, which is. This is it. This is the void of the unknown, of adventure, of impulses, of faith, of of following that, of following the whispers. And um, you are literally doing it. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. So thanks so much for coming back on to Into the Nothing. Really appreciate you and your time. Thanks, Patrice. So good to have me back. And, mm. you know, and I love everything you do and everything that you stand for is um, really resonant and I think resonant with more and more people. So, yeah, I love seeing your podcast just thrive. Mm, thank you so much. And and talking about it thriving, it's really to you who's listening right now and that gorgeous soul. Thank you so much for listening and thanks so much for coming on this journey of this um just passion passion project that is evolving and yeah, as I said in the beginning please subscribe please stay with me on this journey and if you feel inclined to share it with you know someone in your family or someone a girlfriend that might be struggling to make these kind of decisions she knows she wants the adventure but she can't quite listen to it and trust it please send her this episode and yeah just thank you and of course I'll see you in my next episode